Hi, how are you? Hope everybody's doing well. Let's talk about scripture. The scripture readings have been taken from the first book of Samuel and the gospel of John, but also we have 1 Corinthians. But we're going to be emphasizing on the first book of Samuel and from um, the gospel of John. And is that I think that there is a beautiful message here that is really important for all of us and we shouldn't forget that we need to invest a bit of ourselves into our faith to get to know better. But most important of all, we need to find good people of faith to surround us with. And that's the only way that we get to know God better. We get to recognize him and we get to follow him, truly follow him. In the first book of Samuel, uh, we see John Samuel with good intentions, but really confused. <laughs> uh, Samuel was committed. Uh, he was a young man, but really committed to his faith. Uh, so much that he worked at the temple. Uh, not only he worked at the temple, he lived in the temple by <laughs> uh, the sanctuary. Uh, he worked for the priest of the temple, which was Eli. And Eli was the superior of Samuel. Uh, Samuel received all his orders and tasks to do during the daytime from him. Okay. Samuel had a room. Not only in the temple, but he had it right there at the sanctuary. He had a room there in the sanctuary. And beside his room, it was the room of the priest, Eli, next door. And three times, tell us the first book of Samuel, the Lord called Samuel. But he thought it was Eli. So he would wake up, go to Eli, say, hey, what do you want from me? <laughs> and Eli said, I haven't called you. Go back to sleep. <laughs> And we know who was it, right? We know the story because we know it was the Lord who was calling Samuel. And why? Somebody so committed, living at the sanctuary of the temple, being there day and night, couldn't recognize the Lord. I love the reason that the book of Samuel gives to us. It says, at that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. Samuel did not know the Lord. And this conclusion seems to be surprising and almost incredible, especially speaking of someone who is supposed to be closer to God than many because he didn't only was close to the temple, he worked in the temple and he slept in the temple. But this reveals something really important to all of us to remember, that being committed and practicing our faith does not guarantee our knowledge of God. As we try to get to know God better each day, uh, we respond according to what we can, right? But we depend on others. We depend on people that we could trust to guide us in our path to know God better. In this case, Samuel uh, trusted Eli, who had a more mature relationship with God and prove to be sensitive to the voice of the Lord. It didn't take long. I mean, three times. That's okay. <laughs> I think two times because the third one, we got it. But anyway, Eli <laughs> realized it, that it was really God who was calling Samuel, right? It says in scripture, uh, then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth so he said to Samuel, go to sleep. And if you're called, respond, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So we have a bit of help <laughs> there. We thank Eli and his relationship with God to be able to connect Samuel with the Lord. And this is 
a great revelation for us, a confirmation that we cannot do this by ourselves, that we need help to know God better every day, to allow him to reveal, reveal himself into our lives. We cannot do it alone. We would just, if we try, be walking around confused, lost, frustrated for not finding what we are looking for, for failing in looking, well, I mean, finding what we're looking for. And we are, as human beings, as vulnerable human beings, so susceptible of getting lost. Today, we have so many voices invading our heads, our minds, that claim to have the truth. If we don't take care of ourselves, we can fall victim to lies or become palms of liars with false agendas, masked with false virtue. We need to know where the Lord is, but sometimes more importantly, we need to know where he's not. And in the meantime, we need, we need good, good people of authentic faith, true believers to guide us, to help us along the way. Unfortunately, today not everybody who claims to speak in God's name really knows him. The history has terrible, terrible stories of so-called religious leaders who end up, for example, convincing their followers that they have to take their own lives. False prophets are nothing new. They were here before Jesus and they are still here today. That is why Jesus wanted to tell us that we need guides, that guides facilitate us our path of faith. And how two of his disciples were able to recognize the Lord thanks to those guides. This is not by chance. They recognize and follow Jesus because they allow themselves to be guided by someone they trusted, that new God. John the Baptist. John the Baptist, all he had to say was, behold the Lamb of God. And they knew. Because they trusted John the Baptist. Because John the Baptist became their guide of faith, their leader. One of these two disciples was Andrew. And Andrew, as soon as he recognized the Lord, he became a guide for others. The first one that he went to was Simon Peter. He went to Peter and he said, we had found the Messiah. You have to come. <laughs> and as soon as Jesus saw him, he told him, you are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated to Peter, rock. And it's beautiful because we know that later on, Peter would become the guide of many others. Not only the guide of many others, the spiritual father for many others, but the guide of his church. Jesus will say to him later on in the gospel, Peter, you're our rock and I will build this church with your help. <laughs> Jesus, recognize that we cannot do this by ourselves. We need the church. We need good leaders that help us discern 
that help us get out of our confusion of our getting lost. That's why we need to pray and ask to the Lord to help us to put good, authentic people in our path. Not people who will use God's name to advance their own selfish agendas and trying to manipulate us with lies, but people with authentic faith that will not confuse us, but will help us find ourselves, our true selves. Will help us to know God more profoundly than ever before, more intimately than ever before. Will inspire us to love God more deeply than ever before. And once we know the Lord, let's be sure that we will be able to recognize where he is, where he's found. And once we recognize the Lord, we would want only one thing, to follow him. May God bless you all and let us be saints.